Welcome back to our dice poker game. In the last episode, we created a loop to run a number of dice hand rounds. In this video, we're going to um, work on determining, um, counting up for when the player won or the computer won, and then determining who the overall winner is. All right, so to get started, we need to um, also, besides num the number of rounds variable, we need to initiate a variable for the number of player wins and the number of computer wins. And so we will we'll make two more variables, one for player wins, and we'll set that equal to zero to start with, and we'll do one for computer wins, and set that equal to zero. in comments for each of those. And then we need to um, be able to call the computer hand or the player's hand and differentiate between the two. So in order to differentiate between the computer hand and the player hand, I'm going to change hand one into C hand and hand two into P hand for player hand. And then I'll go ahead and put in those comments. And then down here when we call the hands we need to um, differentiate so we'll do this one and we'll say this is computer hand and this is player hand and then we'll go ahead and um, add a text string in front of that so this is computer hand and then this is player hand Okay, so let's compile this and make sure it works before we go on. And so, yes, we want to play. And how many rounds? We'll play two rounds. Let's do three. And we have an extra dice hand being printed out, so I'm thinking that that's in the two string of the dice hand game. So we'll go down here. Yes, so here it says dice hand. So we'll just go ahead and take in the print dice hand method of the dice hand class, we'll just take out this string here and then it should leave us with computer hand and dice hand. formatting issue we can fix later or you can fix on your own time it's just we need another tab or something okay so then let's go and back to the runner and after we print out the hands then we need to um, have a method that determines the winner. So in order to do that we need to rank the different hands um, like a flush straight being the highest 
So we'll need to go ahead and put another method in the dies hand class to rank each of the hands. So let's go back to the dice hand class and after before the print statement I'm going to make a method that says public void determine hand value And I'm going to say if hand type dot equals five of a kind, then I'm going to set the hand value to six, which is the highest that I have in this set of different hands you can win by. So let's go up to the top, and I believe we need a variable for hand value. So we have one for hand type, we just need one for hand value. So private int hand value, and I'll start by setting it to zero. And let's go down and finish our method. And so we can copy this and just add an else if in front of it. And if the hand value is equal to four of a kind, then the hand value would be five. I believe I'm missing, yeah, I'm missing a second parentheses here on these, so I'm going to go ahead and put those in. So now if the hand value is, the next one would be a full house. And so we'll set the hand value to 4. And else if the hand value next after a full house would be three of a kind. And the hand value would be three. And if it's two pairs, then the hand value would be two. And if we have one pair, then the hand value would be one. And then if it's anything else, then the hand value, which means basically it's one of everything, then the hand value would be zero. Now you could check for a straight, um, and I'll let you add that on your own time. And then we also need a getter for the hand value, so public string get hand type. And we'll call determine dice hand and return hand type. And let's check to make sure that's, yep, determine dice hand. That's one way to just get the hand type. And then we need one to get the hand value, so public int get hand value. And then we'll determine hand value, call that method. And then we'll return the hand value. And since these are assessors and mutators, I'm going to go ahead and put them up at the top where we have a section for assessors and mutators. OK, 
Okay, let me compile and make sure we don't have any errors. And what doesn't it like? Oh, I spelled equals wrong. Therefore, I have them all spelled wrong because I was copying and pasting. One of the tragic problems with copy and pasting is you replicate an error if you have one. Okay, so let's go back to our runner. So after we set up variables for to keep track of the player wins and the computer wins, and we've called each hand, then we need to actually determine the winner of each hand. So after this for loop, I want to be on the outside of the for loop. No, inside of the for loop because at, at each round we want to determine who the winner is. And so we'll call winner, and we'll need to make that variable, is equal to determine hand winner. And we'll pass in the computer hand and the player hand. And then we'll need to write this method determine hand winner 